guys. So now I'm going to talk about a little, um, I guess I'm wearing my Kyoto t-shirt. Um, I'm going to talk a little about uh, Judaism in Portugal and Anusim. So as you may know, um, in Portugal we used to have, and I'm going to specifically talk about the case of my city because I'm from a city that has Jewish history and it has the oldest surviving synagogue in the Iberian Peninsula, if I'm not wrong, or at least Portugal. That much is uh, true. So, according to um, history, my city was built basically, uh, well, it has older history of settlement by Romans, by, uh, you know, already Jews, because as we know, Phoenicians and Jews came early in, uh, you know, even before Jesus was born, whatever, <laughs> before the current era. Uh, but my city, as uh, named as it is, is re recent, medieval, probably. Um, so the city was composed of Roughly half Jews, roughly half non-Jews. Uh, um, you know, from 30 to 40 percent at any given time, and uh, even 60 percent when uh, Spanish Jews were expelled from Spain. Now we had kind of a frisky king that was ambitious and wanted to reunite Spain and. Uh, um, Spain and, uh, I'm sorry, I just got a message, um, from Spain and, uh, Portugal, they wanted to reunite it, but that, that, uh, sluts, I'm not going to call her names, but, uh, that Spanish lady had a prize attached to it, and the uh, King of Spain wanted our king to expel Jews. Now, of course, uh, the king uh, knew Jews, had some trusty Jews in his, uh, you know, in his company and had no interest in expelling them. So he kept on delaying, giving, you know, excuses, creating specific laws uh, uh, like forced conversion to keep them here, but just change them into Christians. And uh, even, you know, Portugal is a very specific case. For instance, even though there was Inquisition and stuff like that, uh, there was a specific uh, thing that co new Jewish converts didn't have to go to church. They could be Jewish as long as they didn't practice outside their homes, you know. So it's quite interesting that our specific condition you know, we just expelled Jews uh, as a kind of, a, um, you know, it was reluctantly and uh, in part it was a way to satisfy the king of Spain, but the king of Portugal didn't want exactly to expel them, although um, there are specific things. Of course, later there was an inquisition and there was really dreadful things uh, to the new Christians. But uh, as a base, uh, they were allowed to practice and there were laws that renewed their uh, right to, to be uh, left alone, uh, for lack of a better word, um, for a lot of time. So basically, they had, uh, you know, you're just a um, uh, Christian by name, but you can still be Jewish. There wasn't a heavy control. We have uh, even collo colloquialisms that uh, reflect the fact that uh, authorities weren't, weren't actively seeking Judaism, Jews and persecuting them. Uh, <laughs> And uh, so it is a rather curious thing. So this kind of uh, promoted the uh, 
crypto Judaism thing. Uh, of course, later on there was the, the Christian Inquisition because, of course, the um, the church has a lot of had a lot of power in Europe. And uh, then we also have the the period where Spain ruled over Portugal. There's a lot of stuff. But uh, what I think killed Judaism in Portugal, crypto Judaism per se, is um, uh, the early uh, 20th century um, with the, the, the dictatorship. And uh, I know that... Uh, Especially in this area I live in, because it's really close to to what they claim was were the Virgin Mary apparitions, whatever nonsense. That uh, kind of turned a probably turned a lot of crypto Jewish families into uh, real Christian families. Um, there was a lot of propaganda trying to validate. Um, you know, trying to make um, the... Um, there was a lot of propaganda trying to make uh, people believe that uh, uh, the, 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 the Virgin Mary, whatever nonsense, had really appeared in Fatima. I even have a grandmother, a great-grandmother, that people say was there and that she saw it. So that hoax has quite a lot of traction and was spread out throughout Portugal. So I believe that a lot of crypto Jews ceased to be Jews at the at that point. So in my city, considering how close it is, um, I think that word of mouth got here. There was a huge publicity apparatus um, geared towards controlling the population and uh, the miracles and whatever nonsense that that specific historical event and i'm not talking about the apparitions that's not a an historical event that's uh an oax but uh and it is proven to be an oax but uh well doesn't matter the fact that uh, portugal the portuguese government and the, the catholic church sought out to use that for their political advantage and spread a lot of propaganda and of course there was some sort of uh, illusion perpetrated i think it was a solar flare thing and uh, lots of people did believe i have an ancestor that was there and claims to have seen that and uh my grandmother says uh, she wasn't very religious but after seeing that she became quite religious of course I don't know what kind of mojo they use, what kind of, you know, illusions they use, because, of course, you can use certain certain chemical compounds to give illusions to people or some drugs or whatever. I don't know what they did. Uh, so I think that that, um, especially this area that is very close to Fatima, was definitely influenced and a lot of crypto Jews that may have existed here ceased to you know practice Judaism they may still have some rituals and uh, that's why I think you know <laughs> there are some key things that uh, some clues some behaviors in locals that show the history uh, that there is a history of Judaism in this city but uh, again the Fatim apparitions did uh, contribute a lot to the death of Judaism in Portugal uh, that's my belief at least uh, I don't know so yeah have a nice evening uh, goodbye and see you next time